Hey, what's up you lot, Path here, and this video is going to be slightly different to my usual ones. In today's video, we are going to be talking about how we can calculate the entropy of a system we happen to be studying. And we will be using some basic but intuitive methods of counting the number of microstates the system can occupy. Now, if you saw my previous video explaining the basics of entropy, check it out up here if you haven't seen it already, you'll remember that we talked about how the entropy of a system is defined as the Boltzmann constant, Kb, multiplied by the natural logarithm of the total number of microstates the system can occupy, which is basically all of the configurations our system can be found in. More on this in a second. You might also remember that for that video, I wrote up a little document containing five questions for you guys to have a go at. And the idea was that attempting those five questions would give you a better understanding of what entropy actually is and how it's used in practice by physicists. In this video, we will be going through the first of those five questions in that document. The question specifically focuses on counting microstates, which I feel is the most interesting part about calculating the entropy of a system. I'm also going to be making a video going through the remaining four questions in that document over on my brand new Patreon page. So guys, feel free to head over there and support this channel on Patreon if that sounds like something you would be interested in. Anyway, enough chit chat from me now, I'm going to be handing over to PastPath to show you how fun counting microstates can be. Let's start with question one, and let's actually read through it before we do anything else. Imagine we are studying a system consisting of four particles in a box. Each of these particles, A to D, can occupy an energy level with energy Ne, where n is a positive integer and e is an arbitrary but constant amount of energy. For now, assume that the particles can be distinguished from each other. Part A. What is the total energy of the system when the four particles occupy the energy levels shown in figure 1? Part B. If the entire system contains 7e worth of energy, all of which is distributed across the four particles, what is the total number of microstates the system can occupy? And then we've got a figure as well, figure 1, which is particles A to D shown occupying specific energy levels in the system. So let's break this down then. This first question is designed so that we get used to working with particles in a box, or at least using the conventions that I'm going to be using for the rest of this document. That's the main thing. And if we look at the very first part of the question statement, what this is telling us is that we're studying a system consisting of four particles in a box, and the diagram shows this very nicely. We've got particles A, B, C and D, all inside a box. Now, as we can see, these particles can occupy specific energy levels, which is what the next part of the opening statement is telling us. These energy levels are basically equal to Ne, where N is just some integer, some positive integer, in other words, one, two, three, and so on. And E is just some random amount of energy, but the only important thing is that it's a constant amount of energy. The part of this paragraph telling us that the particles can be distinguished from each other will become important in a later part of the video. But for now, all we care about is that these particles can be labeled particles A, B, C, and D. We can tell which is which. And then all we have to do here is to see that firstly, particle A is in the 4E energy level, particles B and C are in the 2E energy level, and particle D is in the 6E energy level. Basically, this is just my way of showing you the convention that I'm using for representing how much energy each particle has. So, starting with our solution to part A, we can say that the total energy, we're going to call this E subscript tot, of the system when the particles are occupying those particular energy levels is equal to the energy occupied by particle A plus the energy occupied by particle B plus the energy occupied by particle C plus the energy occupied by particle D. Nothing more complicated than that. And do excuse my handwriting, this is the first time I'm doing this, but hopefully I'll get better as the video progresses. But anyway, so this just ends up being 4E, which is the energy of particle A, plus 2E, which is the energy of particle B, plus 2E, which is the energy of particle C as well, plus 6E, which is the energy of particle D. And so the total energy carried by the system in this particular configuration is 14E. Now let's look at part B of the question, which is where things get really interesting. Part B of the question, let's just remind ourselves, says that if the entire system contains 7e worth of energy, all of which is distributed across the four particles, in other words, it's not distributed along the, the sides of the box or anything like that, it's just the particles carrying that energy, what is the total number of microstates the system can occupy? Now, as you'll recall if you watched my previous video on entropy, a microstate simply is one particular configuration in which the system can be arranged. We've been told that our system now has a total energy, E subscript tot, of 7E. 
and we've been once again told that the system contains four particles. In other words, what we've been asked to find is the total number of ways in which 7e worth of energy can be distributed over four particles. Now, there are ways to make this calculation easier, but in this video I want to go through it step by step and try and find as many different combinations as possible whilst working systematically. So, let's start by drawing us a little diagram. Let's say this is our box here, and these are our energy levels, E, 2E, 3E, and 4E. Of course we can have more, but for now we've just drawn the, the lowest four energy levels. Then, let's start putting particles into our system so that the total energy of the system is 7E. Like I said, we want to do this systematically. So let's start by saying that particle A is in the lowest possible energy level. Let's also say that particle B is in the lowest possible energy level, and the same is true for particle C. Now, what this means is that particle B cannot be in this lowest energy level here. The reason for this is that we've already got E plus E plus E, that's 3E worth of energy. If the system in total must have 7E worth of energy, then the last particle must be all the way up here in the 4E energy level, and we'll call this particle D. Now, the total energy of our system is equal to E plus E plus E plus 4E. And so we see that for this particular system, there are four particles in the box, and the total energy of our system is 7E. Therefore, what we've drawn here is one possible microstate of our system. That's a good start. If we're going to continue being systematic about this, then one thing that we can do is now we can say that instead of particle C being in the lowest energy level and particle D being in the 4E energy level, we can say that particle C is in the 4E energy level and particle D is in the lowest energy level because still the total energy of the system is E plus E plus E plus 4E. That's 7E once again. Except this time we've got a different particle, that's particle C, in the 4E energy level. Which means we found another possible microstate for our system. That's two so far. Now the reason that we can do this kind of thing, we can say that particle C being in the 4E energy level and D being in the E energy level is different to when they were the other way around, is because we've agreed that these particles must be distinguishable. We can tell them apart from each other. Particles A, B, C, and D are clearly distinct from each other, and we can know which is which. And then, of course, we can continue doing exactly what we started. We can have a third microstate where particle B is in the 4E energy level and A, C, and D are in the lowest energy level. And we can have a fourth microstate where particle A is in the 4E energy level and B is in the lowest energy level. So, just as a recap, we found four different possible microstates for our system if the system contains 7E worth of energy and has four particles in it. Just for simplicity, I'm going to draw those four microstates like this, where we've got three particles in the lowest state and one particle in the 4E state, and I'm going to say that we've got four lots of this. Obviously understanding that we've got four different particles, particles A, B, C, and D, and each one of them can be in the 4E state while the others are in the lowest state. Moving on then to another way to arrange these particles. Now I'm going to be slightly less systematic now. Normally what I would say is we figured out what happens when three particles are in the lowest energy level, so let's see what happens when two particles are in the lowest energy level and two are in higher energy levels. But I'm not going to do this here, and you'll see why in a second. Let's start by assuming that one of the particles, let's say particle A, is in the lowest energy level, and let's assume that all the other three are in the 2E energy level. What's the total energy of the system? Well, it's E plus 2e plus 2e plus 2e. That is 7e, and we've still got four particles in our system. Therefore, this particular configuration of particles a, b, c, and d also fulfills the requirements up here. And the reason I decided to go with this particular combination of particles a, b, c, and d is because, again, we've got the same scenario. One microstate is when particle a is in the lowest energy level. Another microstate is when particle b is in the lowest energy level and particle a moves up. So that's this one here. And of course we can do the same with particles C and D, which means we found another four possible microstates for our system. And so just for our own note-taking purposes, we can draw that like this over here, one particle in the lowest energy level and three of them in the 2E energy level. And now for the big boy. Remember how I said if I was being thoroughly systematic, there could be a particular microstate where we've got two particles in the lowest energy state and two of them slightly higher up. Well, one possible combination of this is when particle A is in the lowest state and B is in the lowest state, particle C is in the 2E energy level, and particle D is in the 3E energy level. So this is one particular combination. We found a microstate, two particles in the lowest energy level, one in the 2E and the other in the 3E. And at this point, I'm going to make a little tally here because things are going to get messy very, very quickly. 
So in this particular case, we found one microstate so far. That's the beginning of our tally. Another possible microstate. Let's say we swap particles C and D. So in this case, particle C is in the 3E energy level and particle D is in the 2E energy level. Great, that's another microstate for our system. And then we can change things around a bit. As we've said so far, particles A and B are in the lowest energy level. What about if particles A and C were in the lowest energy level now? Great, there they are, particles A and C in the lowest energy level. That means that one of the other particles, let's say particle B, must be in the 2E energy level, and the other must be in the 3E energy level. Oh great, one more microstate to add to our tally. And then another possible microstate is when particle B is in the 3E energy level and D is in the 2E energy level. So that's one more for our tally. That's four, by the way, I realize this is a bit messy, I'm going to clean that up. We've now figured out the two possible combinations, two possible microstates, for when particles A and C are in the lowest energy level. So instead, let's now say that particles A and D are in the lowest energy level. So here they are, and as always, for the other two particles, one of them has to be in the 2E level and the other has to be in the 3E level. Which means we've just discovered another microstate, that's five. And then we do our usual trick of swapping the two particles in the two higher energy levels, so now B is in 3E and C is in 2E, and we can add one more to our tally. That's six so far. Okay, now we've exhausted all possibilities of having particle A and one of the other particles in the lowest energy level. We've done particles A and B right at the beginning, then we did A and C, and then we did A and D just now. Let's say then that B and C are in the lowest energy level. So here they are, and then let's say that particle A is in 2E and D is in 3E. That's one more to our tally, and now we can do our usual thing of saying that particle A is in 3E, and particle D is in 2E. We've got eight so far, and we're doing well. Now let's see what happens when particles B and D are in the lowest energy level. At this point, we should be familiar with the fact that one of the particles again will be in 2E and the other will be in 3E, and we add one to our tally. And if we put A in 3E and C in 2E, then we can do one more on the tally as well. The only combination left for two particles in the lowest energy level is particles C and D. So here they are, and then we can say that A is in 2E and B is in 3E. We can add one more to our tally. And then finally, we can say that A is in 3E and B is in 2E. And we add the last little check mark to our tally. So we found 12 different possible microstates in this particular combination of particles. So drawing my diagram once again, I'm going to say that two of the particles are in the lowest energy state, one of them is in 2E and the final one is in 3E. And we found that there are 12 different possible combinations of this. And at this point, unless I'm missing something, we figured out every single way to put these particles in so that the total energy of the system is 7E. And we've got four particles, and they must occupy one of these energy levels, E or 2E or 3E or 4E. So all that's left is to find the total number of microstates. We just find this by adding 4 and 4 and 12. And so we can say that for this particular system, which has 7E worth of total energy, and this is distributed over four particles, the total number of microstates is 20. And just to match the convention used in the rest of this document, I'm going to say that the total number of microstates is denoted by the Greek letter omega. Which means that we found the answers to part A of the question. We saw that for this particular combination of particles, again, that's a horrendous curly bracket, the total energy of that system is 14E. And then when the total energy of the system is 7E and we've got four particles, then the total number of microstates that that system can occupy is 20. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Once again, you can find a link in the description box below to the document that contains this question, as well as four others related to calculating the entropy of a system. Once again, video solutions to this document, as well as all other documents I'll create for future videos, will be found on my Patreon page. Although I intend to make the documents themselves easily accessible through all my videos. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more fun physics content. Thank you so much for your support as always. I really appreciate it. And with all of that being said, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you really soon.